Hi, my name's Craig. I'm the Technical Manager here at QNEP UK. And today we're going to talk about our QVR Pro appliances. So these are not NAS. Um, these are based off the NAS in hardware alone, but the operating system is a little bit different. Um, these run our QVR Pro OS, uh, which we, we just call it the QVP appliance. They'll be branded with the BioStore logo on the front. Uh, the unit I've got here to demo today is the QVP-41A. Um, there are four different units in this range, so if we go have a look, uh, we've got 2-bay, 4-bay, 6-bay and an 8-bay. Um, the spec is slightly different in each of them, so if we go and take a look at the differences, uh, so they all do run the, the QVP OS there. Um, so you can see that the smaller 2-bay is a Celeron J1900. We move up to a Pentium uh, for the 4-bay. We've got a Core i3 for the 6-bay. And we've got a 6-core i5 uh, for the 8-bay unit. Um, all of them, apart from the 2-bay, can take drives up to an 18 terabyte in each of the drive bays. Uh, the 2-bay unit is limited to a 16 terabyte drive in each of its 2-bays. Um, as we go through the different units, all of them are uh, embedded with eight channels as standard. So that's our QVR Pro Gold license embedded on all of them. So there's no restrictions for playback or recording, um, just the capacity you provision really on, on how much you can do recording. Um, the maximum licenses on the 2-bay is 16. Um, on the 4-bay, it's 24. On the 6-bay, it's 36 licenses maximum, and all the way up to 48 licenses on the largest 8-bay. Uh, so this is really just in relation to the capabilities, the CPU, how many things it can manage at once. Um, so that's the, uh, the, the default setup of each of them. They all do come with 8 licenses as standard, and more licenses can be purchased from our license store if you need more than the 8 that are included with them. Um, the unique thing about these units is that you don't need to download anything from the internet to make them work. So anybody familiar with our NAS, um, if you wanted to install QVR Pro on one of our NAS, by all means you can do that um, if it's running the, the QTS operating system. But there's a dependent app that works with it, so you have to download Container Station first. Then you have to download the QVR Pro uh, server software, so that'll install next. If you want the HDMI output, you also have to download the HD Station application, um, and then you'll need the local display clients as well. So if you wanted to monitor the cameras uh, uh, from the HDMI output, you would have to do that, uh, download that software for that as well. Um, the software for the QVR Pro appliances, everything is included, built into the product. So if you did want to set this up as a true um, isolated unit, um, let's say uh, recording cameras for a school, something where you don't want it connected uh, for remote access or internet viewing. Um, you can do that very easily with these ones, whereas with the, the NAS, you do have to um, ideally connect it to the internet initially to download the software. Once it's downloaded, you can then disconnect it, or you could go to our um, app center and download all the apps individually um, and then install them manually in the app center while you're offline. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go through the install of the QVP-41A. Uh, this is the dash 8 channel, so it's got 8 channels embedded as standard. Uh, so we're going to click Start Smart Installation Guide. It wants us to come up with a name here, so I'll just put in here uh, QVP-41A. Uh, password, I'll just put an easy password in there. And we'll click Next. Um, needs to synchronize with the time server. So obviously if you're on the internet, uh, you can choose the synchronize option or you can set it as the same time as the computer you're setting it up from. We'll just leave it on the uh, NTP server. Uh, here it lets you set some options for um, the IP addresses. So this is going to connect off to the internet in my setup. I do have it online, but if you didn't want it online, it's very easy to do that. Uh, just connect it directly into a network or a switch where the cameras are located, where there is no internet connected. Um, alternatively, you can just remove things like the default gateway and the DNS servers from uh, this configuration here. If you were to set this um, to the static address, you could set all these to zeros down here and it wouldn't be able to uh, connect to the internet, um, even if it was on a network with internet access. So we'll click next. Um, you've just got options there for whether you're using it on um, Windows or Mac setups. Um, so you can choose over here Windows, Mac, AFP. Um, I'm just going to untick the Mac option because you know, although I'm using a Mac here, it uses just SMB just fine. So I don't need the, uh, the AFP enabling on that one. So we'll click Next. 
Uh, it sees the drives I've got installed here, so I've just got a couple of small SSDs for the demo. Um, I can set those up in RAID 1, whichever option we want. I'll set it up in RAID 0 just for speed. Um, and then we've got some other options. I would recommend a redundant RAID mode there as well if you were going to do that. And we're also recommending that you don't use SSDs. Ideally, use a pair of hard drives or, or, or lots of hard drives for your recording. So we'll click Next and we'll click Apply. So now what it's going to do is just apply those changes, apply those settings. It's going to go off and change the name, the password I've set. If you've changed the IP address settings, this is where it's going to go do that. Um, this will take a couple of minutes. After it's done that, it will reboot the device so that it comes back up and running um, with all the settings you've chosen. Um, and then we'll be able to continue on from there. So we'll just wait and let this finish. Okay, so that's the installation wizard all finished. So now what we're going to do is log in with the username and password that we set up on the um, initial setup wizard there. Um, just some information here about data and privacy. Scroll down, click continue. So now it's going to launch a tutorial to let you know how to use it. Uh, we'll skip that for now. Um, there's only a couple of steps that you need to do to get the device up and running. Um, so the first is you need to add some storage. So as part of the setup wizard, we did create the RAID that we've got set up. Um, so now it's saying that we've got an available storage of just under 400 gigs in this particular instance. So I'm going to click the add option. I'm going to go with the recommendations and just say yes, that's all fine. So we can tick that it's going to go on that main volume. We'll click next. Uh, we don't have enough uh, free space to create a spare volume. That's fine. We don't need one. Click next and then we'll click apply. So once we've done this, it's going to prompt that now you've set up recording storage, do you want to add cameras? So I'm going to say yes to that one. So now we just need to add a camera. So here we can see that we've got eight channels available because this has eight embedded licenses of our QVR Pro Gold package. We'll click the add option. Now what this will do is it will go off and scan the network uh, for any cameras that you may have. Um, it'll auto, auto detect quite a few different um, options out there. For my uh, lower cost uh, real link options, it only finds them as OnVIF options. So I usually just skip this step and go next. But if it finds your cameras just like it has one of my Axis ones there, you can just tick it and it'll pre-fill all the information out for you. Um, so I'm going to click on the next option and I'm going to add it manually. So here we go, add manually. So we can go input camera name as well so that we can label the camera name with the, uh, the box there. So I'm going to add uh, front garden. The brand of the camera is going to be a Reolink. If I choose the model, it's the RLC 4105 megapixel. And now it wants the IP address of the camera. So in my case, that would be And now it wants the um, account information for that camera so that you can um, log into the camera. So I'll just type that in, click test, get a tick. Brilliant, all working. Um, so now we can just click next. I'm going to ask if we want to edit the settings of the camera. So I'm going to say edit now rather than edit later. Um, so I'm going to turn off audio recording, go to the stream settings and change the preferences to uh, the options that I would use. So I'll put it down to 10 frames a second, reduce the bit rate, reduce the resolution a little bit to save some capacity uh, and then click next and finish. So now we can see that we've got the camera that has been added. Um, so it's just changing the settings for the camera. Um, so it's going to go through, tell the camera that I've changed the, uh, the bit rate, the frames per second. So once the camera comes back, it'll connect. While it's doing that, we can go through and set the recording location and days. Uh, so this is how much storage the cameras will be able to use. So if I was to tick that camera that I've just added and click edit, um, we can see here we've got the QVR Pro Gold license installed. So I'm going to edit the default settings and I'm going to choose I want at least uh, seven days up to seven days, which will give me exactly seven days worth of recordings. So I'll apply that. This is just editing the default settings. So now I'm going to tell the camera to use those default settings. Um, so now we can see that we've got um, at least seven days, up to seven days for that camera. And if you had multiple cameras, you would see them all here in the list so that you would be able to go through and select different uh, preferences for each different camera. Um, if we come down to Recording File Explorer, um, this is on by default. So this allows you to access recordings by the file names as well, if you wish. Um, but the easier way is obviously to just use the QVR Pro client to sign in so that you can 
um, watch the footage rather than just looking up file names. But you do get the two options here of what to download in, uh, QVI format or the standard format. So you've got two different uh, options there. And here's where you would select the recording duration of each single file. So if you wanted to change that, uh, you can adjust that so that uh, instead of each file being five minutes long, you can set it to each file being one minute long. It's entirely up to you how you set it. Five minutes is just the default. Um, so if we go back to recording space, we can see that's all set up correctly. Currently just got the one channel connected. Um, we've got the, uh, the capacity of it and how much is used. Um, so we can come out of that and we can go back to the camera settings and we should see that the camera, there we go, the camera has now connected. We see a little thumbnail from the camera so we can see what it's viewing. Um, recording OK um, tells you information about the camera. At any point, you can go back in and edit the settings. You can choose which network interface, if you've got more than one network interface uh, that you're connecting to each camera from. Um, and you can also um, add some extra cameras up here at the top. Um, and there's also a license center. So if you do want to add in any extra licenses that you've purchased, uh, we do have a license center where you can add different licenses in um, using the, uh, the keys that you've provided. Uh, so if I click Add, there's a few different ways to uh, do the licenses. You don't have to be online to activate the licenses. Uh, there is an offline activation mode to do that as well. So if you are in a completely isolated setup, um, this product will work with that as well. Okay, so as this is a little different from QVR Pro, there are a few extra settings um, within this software because ultimately this is the only interface on this product. There isn't a separate NAS interface as you may have seen on a, on a regular NAS. So some extra things in the control panel, such as the network and virtual switch, if you want to go ahead and change the IP address settings, uh, do firmware updates, things like that, That's stuff that you wouldn't normally see uh, directly on the uh, uh, in the QVR Pro settings. So that's what makes the, uh, the QVPOS a little bit different here. Um, and there is surveillance specific settings down at the bottom as well. So you can click that, it just opens up the, uh, uh, the camera setting screen. Um, so that's how you would do all the setup um, of a QVP device. This is the QVP-41A. Um, you can also do things like downloading the, uh, the direct um, uh, application for installing and running the camera as well from here. Um, you've got the HDMI output connected. So if you had this connected up to a HDMI interface, you've got uh, USB ports so you could plug keyboards and, and mice into it as well um, so that you can interact with it directly. You don't even need a computer connected. The, the device that's doing the recording can also give you your live views. And there's even a view camera button at the top. So you can click that and it will open up the camera feed um, into the client app. Uh, so that you can go and uh, see what the information is on the camera, uh, scroll back through time, export a recording if you wish. And there's also a little dashboard that pops out that gives you some uh, nice overview information um, on the situation of your MVR device here, your network video recorder and uh, how it's performing and whether you need to add some more capacity, um, how are your cameras doing, are they all connected and recording? You'd see them down here if they didn't have um, uh, one recording. Um, but yeah, that's how you set up a QVP-41A. So these are our QVR Pro appliances. Uh, they come in a 2-bay, 4-bay, 6-bay, or an 8-bay option um, with a maximum of 16, 24, 36, or 48 cameras. Um, of course, this is just an extension of what we already offer on the NAS series as well. So uh, most of the features you see here are also available over on the NAS. And we have a lot of different add-ons as well. So if you wanted to add on some uh, smart features like um, uh, counting how many people walk through the frame of the, the camera view. You can do that if you want to have facial recognition, uh, linking to door access systems. We have a lot of different um, add-on apps that you can add from our, from our license store for this as well. Um, if anybody has any questions, please do leave them in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks very much. Bye.